Hello, everybody! Finally, 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 after a long hiatus, I'm finally back. This is the fourth episode of The Student with Wine Glasses. Cheers! So, today, I want to teach you about a very special grape variety that's uh, kind of very deep to the center of my heart. It is a great variety that I really, really love because it goes so well with Chinese cuisine, Thai cuisine, and fatty, oily food. Like you see in German uh, cuisine, for example, the Shenzhou, the Shenzhou. So, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? This is what it is. Pronounce it for me, please. It's called Gewurz Termina. Gewurz Termina. So we kind of divide into two parts of letters. Gewurz is the first part. The Tremina is the second part. Now, why is this freaking name so complicated? I mean, this is probably why this wine is so unpopular in the world compared to Chardonnay, really it's so easy to pronounce. This is very difficult. This is because that the grape was originally a grape called Tremina from the town of Italy called Tremeno. And that's around the northern east corner of Italy. What happened to the grape is nobody really know what happened. One day, this white grape decided to turn pink. Yes, salmon pink, that's what I'm talking about. So, and people re also realize that after it turned pink, it has this really, really spicy, or should I say, perfumey flavor coming out. And Gewurz means in German, spiciness. So that's why we say Gewurz Tremina, which means the spicy grape from Tremina. Now, the northern part of Italy speak mostly German because it's a uh, part of the area used to be conquered by the uh, Austro-Hungary Empire. Anyway, that's a different story. But this grape is a very, very interesting grape because of the flavor profile you get on this grape is so distinct that you never ever mistake it for it, mistake for anything else. You know, blind tasting of let's say 200 wines, you can definitely pick out any Gewurz Tremina from Riesling, Chardonnay, or any Chardonnay Blanc and stuff like that. Why? Oh well. Ah, this is why it is. I can tell you right now, this is so full of lychee. Like, have you ever had lychee? If you've never had it before, find it, find it, find it. Such a best fruit from Asia. Lychee, rose water, and on the spicy side, you have ginger, saffron, uh, orange peel, mostly grapefruit peel, and this, and also uh, stuff like cardamom and cinnamon are often on the nose. It's extremely, extremely aromatic wine. The smell is just unbeatable, and this for this for this reason, I love this wine. And also, um, unfortunately, uh, this wine has a tendency to be very flat. What I mean by that is uh, very low acidity. So if you have a GI reflex, hey, this, this is something for you for a low acidic wine. And interesting enough, as a white wine, this wine actually has extremely high alcohol content. Now, I'm not talking about like 13%. I'm talking about 14%, 15%. When the grape is fully ripened, the Gewürztraminer grape should get to 15% wine. So if you find any bottle of wine that's like 12%, 12.5%, 13%, Maybe it's not fully ripened yet, you know, buy it with uh, skepticism. For ex um, and also then, the region that produces this one um, are mostly regions that of the old world. For example, the uh, original region that's from the uh, Italian region, Alto Adige, still produce some of this one, but mostly that area produces Pinot Grigio because of more um, overwhelmingly easy to produce, higher yields, and more acceptable to most people. And however, this one has found a new home in the German region of France called Alsace. Alsace and Gewürztraminer are extremely, extremely good. They can be made dry or sweet. Sweet will, st will be affected by Botrytis, will be kind of like your Sauternes, Botrytis affected wine. But due to the special characteristic of this grape, it just adds a little pungency of a mustiness to it. That just adds so much weight to the wine. And it's really, really hard to find uh, a Botrytis affected Gewürztraminer. Which is known as Petit's Noble Grand Selection. Anyway, um, aside from that, I personally feel that the other good place the Gewürztraminer is, is produced in this world is actually in Canada. Dun 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 dun. Anyway, so we have example here from Canada, and we have example here from Alsace of France. Now, for this grape to really, really to be successful, you have to have great terroir. Because this, this grape lacks acidity. And to make up for the lack of acidity, you need that minerality. You need that spiciness from the terroir to come right through to the grape. So what I mean by this is uh, Alsace is granite. Granite soil, like deserty granite soil. 
Alto Adige is volcanic, limestone, even uh, mica or mar soil. And in uh, Canada, uh, Okanagan Valley, that area is glacial soil. It goes all the way to Columbia Valley, which also grows a lot of glutamine. These are places to watch out for. Now, let's talk about the one then. So, first one I have, it both of them are 2009 example. Interesting enough, this one is not supposed to be kept long. Um, any kind of loan keeping is not good for it, because the simple mistake of this one is it's made simply as described as pick it, press it, ferment it, bottle it. That's it. Don't age it in oak, don't age it in big, big uh, cement tank for a year and a half because you lose the ar aromatics. And that's very important. So, the first one we have is the. Uh, um, this, this is from the hillside estate. Yes, this is from the hillside estate from Okanagan. And the most important part, I like this one, is because it's from the Naramata bench. Naramata bench is a good part of Okanagan that makes the grape to ripen easily. However, the 2009 and the 2008 and the 2010 has been plagued by um, just quite a series of um, unripeness. The weather isn't so great. The vintages aren't really helping the grape. So what I get on this nose is a good amount. Definitely that lychee is coming out from there as well. But what I get mostly is that um, that bee wax, that minerality of granite soil, and that uh, passion fruit, and that you know. So you have a bit of ginger and turmeric spice, and that uh, saffron. Yep. So that wasn't bad. But I have to tell you, this one smells a uh, the uh, smells is rather weak and rather subdued. However, if you switch to this bottle here, which kind of surprised me a little bit, because when I saw the alcohol content, it says 13%. This is the first, the first F U R S T Vin Di Alsace Uh This one maker, this one, re this one uh, winery owns quite a few uh, parcel of Grand Cur. For example, the Charlottesburg and the first dining. And interesting enough, there are grapes from the Grand Cur in this bottle, but because it's been blended with grapes from other Grand Cur and also uh, not Grand Cur areas, that's why they couldn't label it Grand Cur. And for this reason, the price unbeatably cheap. Now that's one something I want to point out as well. Both of these one aren't cheap. Are fifteen dollars to sixteen dollar range? You can get quality one for that price. It's pretty good. I mean. Compared to other varieties, Chardonnay, aging oak, ah, 25, 24, 23. I mean, Riesling, Riesling with a good single vineyard Riesling will start with you 26, 27, undoubtedly. So these are easy alternatives, and they go super well with turkeys. So this one, when I look at 13% alcohol, I was really traumatized by it, really whether it is decided to buy it or not. Because I, like I told you before, this is a very high alcoholic wine, which means 13% is a bit too low. So I'm wondering whether the grape is ripe or not. But, ah, it just attacked me with the nose. It's like waves and waves and waves. Imagine the sea going back and forth, and on the sea it carries with it sweet, sweet honey bee wax, a lychee juice. Ah, oh, and it marzipan. a pen. Oh my God, ginger. Oh, sugar. Not like not like the kind of like ginger you get the ginger roots. No, but it's a candy, candy ginger. That's what it is. And this is this is great honey suckle outer flower component. It's like if you take the uh, outer flower and you soak it in honey and you take it out and you bite it. That's what it smells like. It's amazing, amazing nose. And on the body, on the palate. Mmm. Wow. This is quite a cheater. 13% alcohol. Good dose of residual sugar. Ah. So which means if you ferment this thing dry, it could be probably 15%. You use the residual sugar ready to cover up the lack of acidity and also give it more body and more creaminess as we go along the only one. It's a really, really good one. The finish is so lifting, so aromatically lifting. You're imagining yourself being lifted by lychee fruit and lychee fruit, ginger, saffron, oh my goodness, got honey, bee wax. You're kind of sleeping on top of all these beautiful spice and fruit. Oh, it's like in the sky. This is a really, really good one. So, for the wine score, the 2009 Gewürztraminer from Okanagan is only 87. 
come on, people in the uh, Hillside State. I have had your one before. The 2007 was pretty damn good. I give it 90 points. And this one, okay, if the vintage doesn't work, it's not up to you. It's up to the sky. And this one from France, the first Vindy Alsace, I give it 91 points. It's a, extremely good. Just that's, that's it. This is no mistake. This one is just a really good one. And interesting enough, this um, the winery also makes um, a few uh, cheap green curd bottling of Riesling and uh, Pinot Blanc. Definitely, definitely seek it out. All right. Cheers. Enjoy. Have fun. Oh, uh, there's going to be a change of format in my program. Yeah, if you want anything you want me to say to you, for example, you want me to get a shout out for your company, shout out for um, your things you're doing, your wedding or whatever, let me know. Text or uh, send me a message on YouTube. I'll do that shout out for you. So anyway, as uh, cheers, enjoy life and try Gabo Why are you not trying it? Try something different. Makes your life more interesting.